one, beginning. Did you know that the calculus we're all familiar with one faced the risk of collapsing? What kept it standing was the birth of real analysis. It's essentially the same calculus, but instead of relying on intuition, it uses algebraic methods, making it far more rigorous. And in this video, we'll explore the fascinating story of how it came to be. After the fierce battle between Newton and Leibniz, calculus was almost complete and became one of the most powerful tools in mathematics. However, it was not rigorous. Choosing to base calculus on infinitesimal quantities also led it to the brink of collapse because these quantities were quite vague. However, scientists at that time accepted that vagueness because they still used intuition to prove formulas. Using infinitesimals in such a vague way was seen as lacking rigor and drew a lot of criticism, most notably from Michel Rowe and George Berkeley. Sir Michel Rowe was one of the first to criticize the use of infinitesimal calculations. In his memoir, De Nouveau Système de la Fini, published in 1703, he argued that calculus was built on shaky reasoning and was nothing more than a collection of clever sophistries. As for George Berkeley, his story of criticizing calculus is full of twists and drama. From his very first writings, Berkeley wielded his pen with satire to attack those known at the time as the freethinkers. Basically, anyone who doubted the truth of Orthodox Christianity or called for reducing religion's role in public life. In 1732, Berkeley published Outschafran, a series of dialogues targeting different kinds of freethinkers. Among them were scientists who dismissed the mysteries of Christianity and treated it as nothing more than unnecessary superstition. The book was widely published and stirred a lot of controversy. But it wasn't until the mocking remarks of the astronomer Sir Edmund Halley appeared that Berkeley decided to write The Analyst. This work was crafted as a satire, attacking the foundations of mathematics with the same force and style that the free thinkers used against religious truths. In the book, Berkeley set out to undermine the basis of differential calculus. He attacks the use of infinitesimals and several other concepts, ultimately concluding that the certainty of mathematics was no greater than the certainty of religion. And for many years later, Berkeley's book continued to spark debate ushering in an era where people tried to rebuild the foundations of calculus in order to counter his arguments. Yet, despite these efforts, calculus kept on developing through methods that were still not fully rigorous. It wasn't until Carl Weierstrass came along that things changed. He redefined derivatives and integrals with a strict and precise definition of the concept of limits. 2. Weierstrass Bernard Bolzano introduced concepts of limits that came very close to the modern definition, with the key idea that intuition should not be brought into mathematics. Unfortunately, at the time, the Austrian government did not allow Catholic priests with liberal ideas to teach, so Bolzano's three mathematical works never became widely known during his lifetime. But Bolzano's efforts were not in vain. About 50 years after his works, Another mathematician finally paid attention to them. That mathematician was none other than Karl Weierstrass. Between 1860 and 1870, Weierstrass studied Bozano's work and was deeply influenced by it. At this point, Weierstrass was especially interested in the idea that mathematics should not rely on geometric intuition, but instead be grounded in purely arithmetic definitions. From this line of thought, the Epsilon Delta method was born. And of course, Weierstrass and Bosano's breakthrough ideas were not immediately accepted by the mathematicians of their time. It wasn't until 1872 when Weierstrass presented a function that was continuous at every point, yet differentiable at none, that he shattered people's faith in intuition. This function became known as the Weierstrass function, and it is expanded as shown on the screen. Only the epsilon delta method could prove that this function is continuous, but not differentiable. From there, Weierstrass gave birth to real analysis, 
by removing intuition from calculus and replacing it with algebraic methods. He also paved the way for fractal theory and chaos theory through the very function he created. And that was the final step in establishing the foundations of calculus. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Goodbye.